Now the question here is, what's the use of static NAT? Um, okay, I use dynamic NAT overloading because I want to uh, provide internet for everyone in my network. That makes sense. Dynamic NAT, again, I have a pool of addresses. I assign it to everyone and everyone can get access to the internet for a while and then they release the next one. So in this case, for example, I have three clients at the same time get access to the net. But when I use static net, I statically configure that this address, 192.168, uh, let me put this out, 192.168.1.1, when it goes to the router, the router assigns 200.100.10.1 to that computer. So what's the point of having this uh, private address and at the same time public address assigned to that? Why don't I directly assign this public address to that computer so that I don't need to configure NAT and all this stuff? The answer is security. For example, if you have a server here, your web server is here, and you, you want to assign a private IP address to the server and you don't want to expose your server directly to the outside network to the internet you can you assign a private IP address to that server but to make server that server accessible to the uh, outside network to the public network everyone on the net you configure a static NAT on that in this case, this IP address is always reserved for the web server because your web server needed to be available all the time for the outside uh, network. But you don't want it to be exposed to the outside network. You don't want an attacker outside knows the direct address of your web server. So you configure a NAT here and your server is covered behind this router or firewall that you have. And whenever it goes out, it uses this address. And whoever from outside wants to get access to your web server, it think, he thinks that this is the address of your web server, whereas the address is this one. So, uh, oh, okay, not this one, sorry. Uh, this one. Thinks the address is, uh, the address will be this one, but the attacker from outside thinks that the address is this public address. That's why we use static NAT and that's how you have to configure that. I mean uh, that's uh, that's why you have to configure static NAT for the servers that you have inside your network. Now another thing that we have uh, with uh, NAT is the NAT addressing term. Uh, <clears throat> This one, uh, later I'll go through the scenario that I have created and when we configure that, uh, you'll understand this uh, better. But here uh, to uh, explain in more detail about the concept, with NAT you have two concepts, inside and outside. Of course, when you say inside and outside, it's so obvious. When I say inside, I mean my local network. That is uh, the inside uh, uh, interface or whatever that I have. And when I say outside, it means outside of my network. Everyone else, public addresses, internet, anything outside my network is considered as outside. Now with this concept of inside and outside, we have inside local, we have inside uh, global, we have outside local, and we have outside global. Now what are these terms? What do I mean when I say inside local or when I say outside local. When you say inside local, it means all the pub, uh, private addresses that you have in your network. For example, if I have clients here, uh, let's say I have so many clients here in my network, all the private addresses, for example, this address, that I've assigned to every client that I have, this is inside local address. Local means the private address and it's inside my network. Now what is inside global? Inside global is the public IP address that you have for your company. For example, we bought this IP address 64.100.10.2. You have this public IP address and this public IP address belongs to your com company your organization. So, <clears throat> so you assign this address 
to this interface of your router that goes to the internet. Now this address is your address, is inside address, inside your company's address. But it is global. It is known by everyone. Everyone from the outside on the net can see this address. So this address is a global address, but it belongs to your company. So it is inside, but global. Now, after that, we have outside. We have outside local and outside global. Outside global is uh, pretty straightforward. When I say outside and global, it means all the addresses that are outside my company. I don't have these addresses. Anyone outside, for example, there is a server here, there's an address, there is a server here, has an address, and all these addresses are public addresses. So any public IP address outside my network is considered as outside global. But what is outside local? Outside local is something like this. Imagine that outside your network there is another company that has a LAN. Now this company has its own private addresses here in its LAN. Now this LAN is outside of your network. So it is considered outside. But it has local addresses, it has private addresses. So it is outside but local. Most of the time in your router you see that outside local and outside global are the same because this server outside is also behind a NAT. When an address comes out, it will be converted to something public. But for the concept, according to Cisco, we have these four terms. Inside local, a private IP address inside your company, inside global, a public IP address that belongs to your company, outside global, a public IP address outside your company that you have no control over it, and outside local, a private IP address inside another company and it's outside your company. So these are the terms of inside and outside and uh, the NAT addressing terms. Now next I'm going to go through a scenario that I have created. I think we have talked enough about the concept. So now it's time to go through the scenario and we configure NAT and we see how we configure it, where we configure it, and uh, then how it works. So for that purpose, I have created this scenario. I'll walk you through this scenario and we'll see how everything works. Uh, this is the scenario or the topology that uh, I have created, but uh, when I want to work with this in GNS3, uh, I'm going to use another topology. But for here, you see that uh, I have a router that is my perimeter router. So it means this part all is my local network. And here, there is ISP which is on the internet and through that ISP I get access to the internet and it's outside my network. So here is your perimeter router. Behind this router you have two different LANs. One LAN is here. Uh, let me change the color. One LAN is here uh, where you have your servers can be your uh, web server, your FTP server, your mail server. All your servers are in this LAN. And this LAN has this address, 192.168.2.0. That is your network address. And then you have another LAN here, which is your corporate network. And all your clients are here. And the network address of this LAN is 192.168.1.0. Now, for this part of the network, I'm going to configure a static NAT. And for this part of the network, I'm going to configure a dynamic NAT. Now this dynamic NAT, one time I configured dynamic NAT with a pool of the addresses. And another time I'm going to configure a, a NAT with overloading. And we'll see how everything works. Uh, <clears throat> for, the, for the purpose of this uh, lab, I have created a topology in GNS3. Here's my GNS3. Uh, the topology 
here is different. Uh, because I didn't want to use computers here, I mean, use my virtual machine and connect uh, everything uh, to, to GNS3, I used uh, these routers as my PC, as my server, and uh, the internet. So uh, look at this topology first. I have to configure a NAT here on my perimeter router. That's where I'm going to configure NAT. And uh, this is the ISP that we have. So in the real world, when you configure NAT here, um, um, you have internet here, and you, you will uh, change the IP addresses. I mean, do the translation for these computers and these computers here. In our topology, since I don't have internet here, I just use a router to represent the internet. So I'm going to use this router to test my NAT later. And here is the ISP. Uh, before starting this, I have to mention that I've already configured uh, everything on these routers, meaning I have already assigned these IP addresses to these router, uh, routers. I have already uh, configured routing table for the routers so that they can see each other. And then, uh, I mean, forward the packets to each other. And then I created one access list on this ISP. This access list blocks all the private addresses from this network to the internet, meaning this server that has 192.168.20 address, IP address, if it wants to go out, it can get through this perimeter router, but at this point, ISP will block it because it has a private address. So as we know, according to RFC 1918, this, uh, a private IP address cannot be uh, on, on the net. So Addresses according to RFC 1918, meaning, meaning all private addresses, meaning 10. anything, 172.16.x.x till 172.31.255.255, and 192.168.x.x, .x, x means uh, it can be anything. These addresses are blocked. So here, my ISP blocks these servers to go out. So if I go to this server, for example, uh, let me, uh, where is it? Here is the server. I've already configured everything and already tried this. So for example, if I ping 200.110.1, meaning the address of this, uh, this uh, for example, server on the internet, if I ping, I will not be able to get access to that. It will be unreachable because the ISP blocks my access. Now, I'm going to configure NAT here, and I'm going to show you after configuring NAT, we will be able to ping this address from here and from here. Let me show you this one also doesn't work with that. Uh, this is my PC. This router is my PC. Now, if I ping 200.100.10.2, you will see that this one is not also able to get access to that. Uh, router and the internet. Later when I configure NAT here, you will see that both of these servers will be able to ping the internet because the address will change at this point as I explained uh, when I was talking about the concept. So this will be my topology and uh, we're going to go through this and configure NAT. As I told you, I have to configure NAT on this perimeter router. So we go to this perimeter router. Uh, where is perimeter router? Here. Here is my perimeter router. As I told you, I've already assigned IP addresses and uh, configured routing protocol for everyone. So here I have to configure NAT. To configure NAT, there are a few steps that you have to follow. First, you have to find out what are the interfaces that participate in NAT. So if you look at this router, this interface is going to participate in NAT because it goes to the internet. And for now, I'm going to configure static NAT for this server. So this interface also is going to uh, participate in NAT. So I found out that this interface and this interface are both in my 